blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Matthew 12, verses 31 and 32 says, Therefore I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven people, but the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. And whoever speaks the word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or the age to come. So what does it mean to blaspheme the Holy Spirit? The sin, it, it, it essentially means to sin, the sin is um, of rejecting God. For anything else, I want to say, if you're afraid that you may have offended God, Jesus Christ, or the Holy Spirit, without realizing it, your heart is obviously in the right place. So, now, context is key. Jesus' statement about this unpardonable sin came as he was speaking specifically about the grumblings of the scribes and the Pharisees. After witnessing the power of Christ and the healing of a demon-possessed man, these religious leaders made comments like, It is only by Beelzebub, bull, or by the prince of demons, he cast out the demons. Just thinking of the unforgivable or unpardonable sin is a pretty scary prospect. Especially if we don't quite understand what it even means. Let's take a closer look at Matthew and Mark, where we find Jesus speaking to the Pharisees. Again, context is always key. The Pharisees deny Jesus' divinity. We find Jesus healing a man who was mute and blind due to demon possession. After the man can see and speak again, everybody was like, "Could this be Jesus? Or, or could this Jesus be our long-awaited Messiah?" Everybody but the Pharisees. That is, the Pharisees were the religious leaders of the day. And they were upset by all of this, marveling at and praising Jesus. They cut in with, is it only by Beelzebub, the prince of demons, that this fellow drives out demons? Basically, they were saying that Jesus performed his miracles by the power of Satan. What a terrible thing to say about Jesus. That right there is downright blasphemy. How did Jesus respond to this accusation? He rebuked them, first using logic. Satan cannot drive out himself. And anyway, why would he stop his own demons? How does that help Satan's cause if he makes people think Jesus is the Messiah? I mean, it's a good point, right? Huh. We know that Jesus was performing miracles by the power of the Holy Spirit because he is God in the flesh. Likewise, the Pharisees had been given full proof from Jesus' signs and wonders that he was the long-awaited Messiah. They should have understood Jesus was who he said he was. Yet, they continued to speak against the power of the Spirit. That's when Jesus accused them of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Oh, that's in Matthew. Again, what is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? Blasphemy is when you curse God or say something bad or untrue about God. The Pharisees were guilty of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit because they were claiming Jesus performed an exorcism through Satan's power, not the Holy Spirit. They were ultimately accusing Jesus of being demon-possessed rather than filled with the Holy Spirit. The Pharisees weren't being naive or ignorant. They knew the Old Testament prophecies. They knew Jesus was God, and yet they stubbornly, blatantly rejected him. Jesus was physically on this earth where they could see him, and witness his miracles, and yet they accuse Jesus to his face that he's performing miracles by Satan's power. Hmm. Jesus tells them that they can say what they want to about him. The best thing against the Holy Spirit can never be forgiven. And you know what? Never is a long time. It's a sorry, not sorry. Claiming that the power of God's Spirit is Satan while God is literally standing right in front of you has very special eternal consequences. And just a thought of that should break our hearts because there are those for who, for lack of knowledge or don't know any better, unbelievers, for whatever reason it is, those who have rejected God. So is there an impartable sin today? Yeah. Rejecting the Holy Spirit. 
Today, the unpardonable sin is when a person continually, and the operative word there is continually, rejects or denies Jesus despite the Holy Spirit's conviction. Those who call God a liar by rejecting his call until the day they die have no hope of conviction of, of, of for, or forgiveness. Sure, people can deny Jesus exists, they can assault him, and they can hate him. But there's hope. Jesus himself said, whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. If a person truly seeks forgiveness from God, there is no sin God will not forgive, except against the Holy Spirit. We are living in the most degraded age that has ever been on earth. And God hates it. It is a dangerous hour in which there is no longer any middle ground. The powers of darkness are so strong that people will go one way or the other. If the devil can make people question serving God with their whole heart, he has a good chance of sweeping them over to his side. And so many are allowing him to do just that today. Many people that that ever before have turned away from God and blasphemed against the Holy Spirit, and many others are on the verge of doing it. And God is mad, as he should be. Every step a person takes that is influenced by the devil leads them closer to blasphemy. So you must know and understand the steps to blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, and they must become real to you. You will be in grave danger if you disobey God in anything, no matter how small it may be. The Bible tells us it's the little things that are the ones that can hurt us the most. Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines. For our vines have tender grapes. Song of Solomon 2.15 You must be careful. You must carefully consider each step before you take it to see if it is a step the Lord wants you to take or if it's one that you want to take. God warns us in His Word not to take steps to blasphemy because He loves us so much. We are to never look to the wrong tree, okay? When Jesus was here, he warned people of blasphemy, and then he said, make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and the tree corrupt, and the fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by its fruit. That's in Matthew twelve thirty three. People are known by their fruits. If you are righteous and holy, your fruit will be good. If you are corrupt and evil, your fruit will be bad. Many people start out well in the Lord, and they bear good fruit, but later on they visit the wrong tree and start eating the wrong fruit. That leads to their destruction. So, just like Adam and Eve, God warned Adam and Eve not to go to the tree of death. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may eat, but the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Because of sin, the Lord has to, had to separate man from his God. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. Hmm. See, God, God also hates a hypocrite. Many people will not admit even to themselves that they have visited the wrong tree and became hypocrites. They could no longer stand the power of God in a godly church or, or God's true people. And they start to criticize and find fault. That draws them deeper into the devil's clutches. So they begin to mock the work of God and say that divine miracles are not real and that God's prophecies are not true. When people fight what God is doing and declare that his works are the works of the devil, they are on the road to blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. They may continue to go to church, but they carry a spirit of hypocrisy. hypocrisy. And they want to destroy others by getting them to turn against God too. See, blasphemers... Basically, they're deceived. That's what Satan is. He's the, he's the deceiver. People who have blasphemy against the Holy Spirit are like the walking dead. They have nothing but they are nothing but a life of shell, and they can never be saved. So you must not waste your time thinking that you can save them, because only the Holy Spirit can do that now. The sin of um, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is forever. It is the same as being dropped into hell. The people who go there will have an eternity of regrets. Those who leave the gospel truth and do not want it or believe it, or they never would have gone away from God. They're running from God. And many have fallen into false doctrine. They're deceived into thinking their beliefs are right, but true saints of God do not fight his miracles or powers. 
Second Thessalonians 2, 10 through 12 says, And with all wicked deception for those who are perishing, because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved, therefore God sends them a strong delusion, so that they may believe what is false, in order that they may also be condemned who do not believe the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. People who reject the word of God and do whatever they want are not being led by the Holy Spirit. And they will be damned by God for all eternity. That's in Matthew twelve thirty it says people are, are either for God or against Him. Plain and simple. So how can we avoid blasphemy? Simple answer: salvation. Get yourself saved. Characteristics of a blasphemer: When you study the lives of those who have blasphemed, you see stubbornness, rebellion, lack of trust in God, and dissatisfaction with God's work. You will see despair and carelessness and people walking on the wrong side of God's will. You will see those who judge God's work and his people and those who, whose roads are littered with stones of the devil's deceit, strife, bitterness, and twisted knowledge. Not one ray of God's sunshine breaks through the devil's dark fog that covers their lives, and they are spiritually blind and deaf to the things of God. Blasphemers do not see the beauty, beauty in divine miracles and healings or in the casting out of devils. And they are always ready to accuse, just as the Pharisees were in Jesus' day. And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they, the Pharisees, asked him, Jesus, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? That they might accuse him. Matthew twelve ten. The Pharisees did not care that the man needed a miracle. They just wanted to find fault with Jesus and justify their doubt. And those same kinds of people exist today. Eternal damnation is a destiny for blasphemers, and nothing can change that. Nothing. They have rejected God and his correction, so there is no hope for them. Some blasphemers may have had real salvation at one time, but they gave over to the devil, so God will never hear their prayers again. Those who reject God will be out of reach with divine, of the divine blood, and without the blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Without shedding of blood, there is no re remission. That is why Jesus had to go to Calvary and shed his blood for us, and whom we have redemption through the, his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Colossians 1.14 Remember the term blasphemy refers to something, saying something about God that is disrespectful. It's disrespectful. It can also refer to doing something against God. Um, to say something is blasphemous. It means the actions or words are in some way, shape, or form against God or God's, depending on the religion. Taking the Lord's name in vain. To take the Lord's name in vain is considered blasphemy according to the second commandment. Resisting the power of the Holy Spirit referenced in the Bible several times, including Matthew 12, 31, that's blasphemous. Doubting God's good intentions, which is that God is unkind, unjust, or cruel, is blasphemous. This can be seen in several areas of the Bible, including Luke 12, 10. Burning a religious document, such as burning the Bible or your baptismal um, certificate, and just so you know, that is a legal document. That's considered blasphemous. Vandalizing a church is considered is a form of blasphemy. This is because you are destroying a religious object. Worshipping Satan, which I shouldn't have to say, but I will, is blasphemous. Worshipping Satan is the abandonment of God as seen as blasphemy. And there are so many more. You just have to look for it, okay, and search and research it. The early church disciples did not hinder the work of the Lord, but God showed them how much he disapproved a people who did when he killed two people for telling just one lie. Just one lie. Acts 5, 1 through 6. But a man named Ananias and his wife sold a piece of property, and with his wife's knowledge, he kept back for himself some of the proceeds and brought only a part of it and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back for yourself part of the proceeds of the land? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not at your disposal? Why is it that you have committed, contrived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to man, but to God. When Ananias heard these words, he fell down and breathed his last. And great fear came upon all who heard it. The young men rose and wrapped him in the, up and carried him out and buried him. God was not angry with Ananias for keeping part of the prophet, but about lying about it. And his wife did the same thing. Look at Acts 5, 7 through 11. After an interval of about three hours, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter said to her, 
tell me whether you sold the land for so much money. And she said, yes, for so much. But Peter, what had happened? But Peter why, um, said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. When the young men came in, they found her dead, and they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. And the great fear came upon the whole church and upon all who had heard these things. The incident with Ananias and his wife put fear in anyone who even thought about doing wrong. That's literally putting the fear of God into somebody. God must have the glory for all of his miraculous works. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will not I not give to another, neither my praise for graven images. Isaiah forty two eight. God has given us his power to use. We can take we can never take his glory, because that when they know God, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Never were they neither were they thankful. But became vain in their imaginations and their foolish hearts was darkened. Most people on earth today do not glorify or thank God for what he has done or who he is to them. God wants your whole heart, not just an outward show. The only honest hearts will please God, the Lord, in all things. But blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. That's in Matthew 5, 8. No matter what people may say, if their heart is not right, they are not right. If God casts the most beautiful angel ever made out of heaven for blasphemy, then he will keep all others who have blasphemed out of his heaven too. Some people think they are untouchable, and if and that if they go just go to church, they will never blaspheme, but that is not so. It is a sin to willfully doubt God, who whatsoever is not a faith of sin whatsoever is not a faith is sin. Romans fourteen twenty three. Every willful doubt you have is a step towards blasphemy, because that grieves the Holy Spirit, and no one can keep grieving the Holy Spirit and be excused. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Ephesians 4.30 So are you distressing the Spirit in any way or causing Him to cry or to be grieved? Examine yourself and see if you're walking in the Holy Spirit or in the vanity of your mind so, so many people, like so many people do today. People who are vain and willfully doubt God do not want to see the truth. So it is worthless to try to change our minds. God will not waste time on blasphemers who are stubborn towards Him and carried away with the devil's deceit. People will either love God or the devil. So who will win that battle for your soul? That's me. That the Holy Spirit can only be committed by an unsaved person because no one who knows and loves Jesus would attribute his works to the devil or his demons. If your heart is so resistant to the point of attributing his works of the, to the devil, it will remain impermeable. It's the Spirit who convicts of sin, and if you are so hardened to it that you can't say it's of the devil and not of God, there's no hope of coming to the saving knowledge of the truth who, of who God is. When a person commits his life to the Lord, Jesus realizes he is a sinner, confesses his sin, and asks for forgiveness, repents of his sin, and makes Jesus his Lord of life, he is immediately indwelled with the Holy Spirit, who has sealed us in him and has given us a guarantee. 2 Corinthians 1, 19-22 The concept of blasphemy against the Spirit and the unforgivable sin is fearful, yet contains the seed of hope. It teaches us that every other sin, however terrible, can be forgiven. Concern about the unpardonable sin may be a token of the Spirit's working in the heart. That's meaning of the Holy Spirit, unforgivable sin. You are alive today, and you, will, you still have a chance to thank God for His mercy and love by accepting Jesus as your Savior and Lord. This is in John 3.16. If you believe that He died as a punishment for your sins and was buried and rose again, you will be forgiven for every sin receive eternal life, and will never have to worry about committing the unpardonable sin. So where do you stand with God today? Are you really born again, or is there some sin or rebellion in your heart? Papa, I seek forgiveness from blasphemy against you, Lord. I realize that even though you know me, know all about me, I needed to confront my sin and, to, and you in order to receive forgiveness. I need your love to receive peace. I am not worthy of it, but I am a sinner, but I know now my life is yours. I do not own my own life. You do. I give 
you myself and all my sins and and all because I want to be healed from the worst sins. I want peace and freedom from sin and anxiety and all that comes with it. I want my heart to be joined to your heart. Give me the confidence in you, Lord, that I am no longer bound by sin. You have set me free. I am your sheep now. I do not own my own heart. You do. I do not own my own body. You do. I do not own my own soul. You do. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for giving me my life back, for helping me to see the light and to feel you making a breakthrough in my troubled heart. You have made me whole again. I shall not fear any longer. You have destroyed the fear, but do not let it destroy me. I give you my all. I owned up to my sin, confronted it, and I asked boldly for your loving heart of goodness to come to me from the cross and heal me totally and forgive me. May I feel and know the difference in me. May others see you in me. May I shine God's love through my eyes. May what blessings I have be, I have received be shared out to others I meet. Only you can heal my troubles, Lord. May I know you care. May I feel your spirit in me. My sin has been washed away. The missing piece of the puzzle has been put back in to complete me. I believe in you. I have faith. I am stronger now because you have stamped out my demons and saved me from death. I no longer have fear that God's freedom. His love and forgiveness have empowered me over my destruction. God is good and he loves me. I felt I was no better than the stone on the dusty road. But I am repentant of my sins and God had made me feel his worth. I feel protected and loved. His sacred heart is full of compassion and love. By his death and resurrection, he set me free. The power of the Holy Spirit is upon me, a sinner, a besmer, a rotten corpse. Lowly and worthless, I felt there was no hope for me. But through prayer, through the sacred heart, there came forgiveness. Father, I want to have a tender heart that responds to the Holy Spirit's invitation to hear your voice and respond to your grace. I ask that the Holy Spirit convict me of my sins. Help me to take notice of and avoid my vulnerabilities, overcome my weaknesses, and empower me to be like Jesus. In whose name I pray. Abba, Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, I thank you, Father, for another blessed day. As this day comes to a close, I pray I have not done anything that was not pleasing to you. If I have, please forgive me. Abba, Father, I thank you for your Son, for becoming the mediator for me. If I had not been for the shedding of his blood, I would not be able to come before you today as he stands between you and I, giving me time to get my life in order. Please let the Holy Spirit give me what I need to do. I need to be able to stand as a as a mediator for those that are in need of you and need, need to find you. May they know that you are the only one that can help them find what they need in life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.